1993 NES games versus 1992 NES games was an interesting transition. You see, in 1992, we had Bucky O'Hare, Kickmaster, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project, Little Samson, Power Blade 2, and then in 1993, we get Color a Dinosaur. That's right. Color a Dinosaur. Games like Rollerblade Racer. Yeah, did you ever rent Rollerblade Racer? Well, I think back in 93, it gave the Super Nintendo a couple of years to come out, so maybe by this time more people have already advanced to the Super Nintendo. And not that all the games in 1993 were terrible, there's actually a lot of great games that came out in 93, but it just seemed like the system kind of devolved, if that makes sense. So in this video, not talking about every game that was released, but we're covering most games that came out for the Nintendo Entertainment System back in 1993. The first game that was released in 93 was Batman Returns, and you'll notice a lot of these games on this list also had ports on the Super Nintendo and maybe even the Sega Genesis as well. But the NES version of Batman Returns is a little bit different from the Super Nintendo version. It kind of has its own thing going on as well. Now it's not a terrible game, it's just interesting that we get another Batman game, this time from Konami and not Sunsoft. Now side-scrolling beat-em-ups wasn't really the forte of the NES, but it did a few games like the Turtles games really well. It's not the worst game in the world, you know. I think I still prefer the Super Nintendo version, but this one I thought played fine. The trouble is, with these side-scrolling beat-em-up games, you almost want them double-player. That's the fun of it. You know, Streets of Rage, Final Fight, Turtles, a Double Dragon, of course. And then Batman is just a single-player thing. A couple cool things, though. They have, like, you know, you can use your Batarang, there's a grappling hook. Not only can you jump and attack, but you can also slide and attack, so that's pretty interesting. Batman Returns, it's alright. Break Time, curious to see this as a 1993 game. And there's a couple games that came out in 93, you're like, I mean, it's not terrible, but... Really? This At this time, there's a new billiards game? A new pool game? That looks like this? I mean, this game could have been on the Atari 2600. In fact, they had a version of pool on the 2600. And again, not a terrible game. Just interesting that it came out so late. And we had games like Overlord. And Overlord, graphically, looks really cool. Looks really, really cool. So in Overlord, uh, you have like this orb that's all spinning around, and you have all these options and these buttons. And uh, they're like, you know, all these cool things, you know, like, like futuristic sci-fi. Uh, I, I don't have a clue how to play this game. <laughs> I never looked into it. I've, I've tried looking into it. I've looked at it. I've, I've seen, like, tutorials, people playing it online and everything. Man, I can't make heads or tails of Overlord. Looks cool, though. It was also a year that we got DuckTales 2. Now, DuckTales, the first DuckTales, one of the most iconic games for the NES, I think. I mean, even the label art for DuckTales 2 is just that kind of classic, old-school, iconic, love to see it. You know another label I love to see? This one, for Factor. Because I know I'm getting a fresh, never-frozen meal delivered right to my front door, prepared by chefs, they're dietitian approved, and they only take two minutes in the microwave. That's it, two minutes in the microwave, every single one of them, don't even have to worry about it. This one is the garlic and herb roasted mushrooms. Let's give it a shot here. The good news is, the prep is already done for me, there's no mess, and I don't have a sink full of dishes. Gotta love that, right? They also keep up with the seasons too, like seasonal vegetables, or flavors just in time for fall. Apple, Dijon, pork chops, cranberry, berry pecan chicken or something like that. Mm -hmm. This one's great. They even have 45 add-ons, things like apple cinnamon pancakes and other breakfast items, like bacon and cheddar egg bites and stuff. Even things like shakes, smoothies, and cold-pressed juices. This one here is pineapple, turmeric, basil. Oh, it's so good. And convenient, too. I just leave them in my fridge. I can grab one right when I go to work. The convenience factor for you and your family, it's amazing. Head to factor75.com or you click on the link below. Use code JohnRiggs50 and save 50% off your first factor box. I'm going to keep eating. Speaking of two minutes in the microwave, it looks like this game was made in about two minutes in the microwave. Ultima Warriors of Destiny. Oh my goodness. Now this is the third Ultima game, I believe, for the NES. And if the first two Ultima games that we got for the NES were painted with watercolors and oils. This game was made with recycled crayons. This game, trust me, the look of this game, the feel of this game, the play of this game, the awkward angle of this game, I mean, it was, it was an experience. It, I mean, good Lord, I don't know. It's, I mean, it was an idea. <laughs> Another AD&D game, we got Hillsfar that came out in 93. And I seem to like this one kind of okay. Um, the, the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons games, they're all, for the most part, kind of different, really. And this one, you can kind of feel that you can do a lot with this game. Um, you know, things like, you know, uh, you know, like, go to the towns and 
you know, like look inside houses and, you know, go into houses that you're not supposed to be in and kind of scour their treasure and steal their stuff and, you know, make sure you do stuff before you get caught. Very, like, Elder Scrolls for the time. Hills Farm might be one looking into if you're just like, oh, actually that, you know, I, I could see a draw on this. Now, again, a lot of times with these NES games, you, like almost like, simple is better. Just give me attack, give me jump, give me uh, go down a warp pipe. I mean, that's fine. But then you have like these epic quests like this on the NES. Uh, there might be there might be some uh, depth to it. We get Bomberman 2 now. Bomberman 2 for the NES. Um, if you're a big fan of the Bomberman series like I am. Exciting times because there's a new Bomberman game on the NES. And this one starts to look a little bit more like the way the Bomberman games should be and should look. Uh, compared to the first Bomberman game that we got on the NES. You know, this one features like versus mode and battle mode and uh, you got, you know, the, the, the this mode as well, which is always kind of cool. Still Bomberman, still great. I'm almost surprised we did not get a Bomberman 3 on the Famicom, but Bomberman 2, we'll take it. And then of course we have all the Bomberman games on Super Nintendo and every other system as it seems. Another great puzzle game in Fire and Ice. This is Solomon's Key 2. And this is also a great year for sequels. You know, we had Bomberman 2, uh, you know, now we have uh, now we have Solomon's Key 2, but they just call it Fire and Ice. They're just gonna leave the Solomon's Key name out of it for the most part. But instead of like, you know, building magical blocks, you're building ice to eliminate the fire in each stage. It's one of those games that seems like it'd be super easy up front, like on paper. And the farther you get, the more it becomes like, Ridiculously impossible <laughs> to me. I've never beaten this game, but I've always had a fun time with Fire and Ice. Might be fun for you to check out. Zen Intergalactic Ninja. This is a Konami game that nobody ever talks about. Now, it's a game, admittedly, I didn't play growing up. I, I don't remember seeing it for rent at my local video stores. I never had it back when I was still, you know, grabbing all these NES games where people were getting rid of them uh, in favor of the newer consoles. Uh, but later in life, I did pick it up and I did grab it, and man, what an awesome game this is. I wish this game would have come out in 91, so more people would have experienced it. It has kind of that weird isometric view, for, at least for some of the stages. Not all of them, not all of them, but it's cool that it gives you, you know, the, mixes it up a little bit. And in the magazines, I remember seeing this game, and for the most part, these were the photos I saw in the magazines, were kind of this view of the game. But just classic Konami action style of a game here. Uh, in these isometric stages, I die far more falling falling <laughs> than I do uh, from the enemies themselves. Uh, but they also do have these kind of side-scrolling stages too, uh, which is kind of nice. So again, mixes up gameplay a little bit. So yeah, uh, Zen Intergalactic Ninja, what a great game. This is one This is one of the premier games that came out in 93 that, man, just not a lot of people talk about. Kid Clown in Nightmare World. That's right, Nightmare World on this one. This is from Kemco. Uh, this game was a Mickey Mouse game in Japan, but I... I think that, I mean, that has something with licensing, I am sure. I am sure of it. Giving me that just classic NES, bright colors, you know, very vivid. Uh, as a clown, you blow these balloons. That is your uh, weapon. Uh, you can sometimes step on them if you need to, uh, you know, get up to a higher platform or something, too. Little bonus stages in the middle, too. Pretty simplistic game, but still super fun. Well, Lethal Weapon, again, we had a version on the Super Nintendo, and then we also had this Lethal Weapon for the NES. And this is what NES games were starting to look like in 1993. Lethal Weapon is known as being a kind of buddy cop movie franchise, right? You got Riggs, of course, that's how I know it, and then you have uh, Murdoch. Now the thing is, though, you'd want it to be a two-player game, so you could play as both players, or both characters. But no, you only it's a one-player experience, and if you want to play as the other character, I'm not kidding when I say this, you have to walk off the edge of the screen, and then the other character shows up in, in return on that edge of the screen. That's literally how you change characters in this game. Tiny Toon Adventures 2, Trouble in Wacky Land. I was so excited to play this game because Tiny Toon Adventures is one of the best NES games, in my opinion. It's like one of the best platformers for sure. And then this game just completely changes up gameplay, which is fun. You, I mean, they have, they have the privilege to do that, but it just makes it so now you're kind of forced in this, you know, amusement park. So then each stage is an amusement park type stage. And any game that features a roller coaster level, I'm already like disinterested. I'm just like, oh man, not the roller coaster level. Why you gotta be, I mean, I, I'll, I'll take an elevator level over a roller coaster level any day. But here we are. This is, um, I mean, again, not a terrible game. Just wish it was just another platformer. Yoshi's Cookie came out for a few consoles during this time. And I don't know if there is a bigger Yoshi's Cookie fan in the world 
more than I am. I don't know what it is about this game, but I absolutely love this game. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite puzzle games with that Mario franchise or whatever. You can say whatever you want, but it's um, this puzzle game. You have to just, you know, move the rows of cookies so it eliminates them either like across or, uh, you know, like vertical or horizontal, you know, from one end to the other as more stacks of cookies go, then you have to, you know, accommodate for those as well. I don't know. I just love this game. I can't place my finger on why. But happy to see this game. This was this. I, I played this mostly on the NES, believe it or not. I was really deep into Super Nintendo during this time. Uh, I believe we made a copy for Game Boy as well. This is the year that we did get Kirby's Adventure. Again, one of the greatest Nintendo games of all time. And it was unfortunate that a lot of people may not have played this so much. Because, again, 93, a couple years after Super Nintendo came out, um, sometimes, you know, people were already into Super Nintendo or deep into Genesis or they were just kind of growing up. You know, they had the NES from back in their day. And then you figure, you know, about however many years later, you know, three, four, five years later, maybe they've moved on by now. I don't know. But I hope they didn't because Kirby's amazing. And then we have a sequel to DuckTales. Well, this one came out later. I was hoping that we'd get a sequel to DuckTales on the Super Nintendo. That would have made more sense to me, but here we have an NES version, and if you loved the first one, you're gonna love the second one. It's more of the same. This is such a great game. It still has like you know, the little, little hidden paths and collect the jewels and uh, you know, there's more going on too. Just a fun style game. It came out later, so maybe a lot of people skipped it. I didn't even know about it until later when I was like, oh, wait a minute, they made a second DuckTales game? Oh, okay. Look at this little opening here. <laughs> Jurassic Park came out on just about literally everything because Jurassic Park was the franchise of the year. Jurassic Park, I mean, they had, I mean, just the movies were huge, uh, the toys, the clothing, uh, just everything. So, of course, they had to capitalize by making all of the great video games as well. And the Nintendo version, I mean, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. I didn't think it's terrible. I didn't think it was terrible. I loved the Genesis version the most. That was my game. The Super Nintendo version was okay. I wish it was more just the 3D stuff in the rooms when you're like Doom style. But the NES one wasn't terrible. I thought it was so cool of Capcom to give us Mighty Final Fight on the NES. Now during this time, uh, you know, it was a couple years later, you know, a couple years after the Super Nintendo version of uh, Final Fight was released. And maybe even, what was it like? three, maybe even four years later, after the arcade version. We get a Final Fight game on the NES. This one actually features Guy. The Super Nintendo one didn't. Uh, unfortunately, this game is also just a single player experience. <laughs> <laughs> but it's done pretty well and very cool to see. Thank you for Mighty Final Fight. Now, of course, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one arcade version. This is its own thing. It's its own version. It's just like a chibi version of Final Fight. And I, I gotta love that. I applaud that. Another hidden sequel with Bubble Bobble Part 2. Bubble Bobble Part 2. I remember first seeing this game in Tri-Cities. Uh, in Richland, there was a store called uh, Nielsen's, and they had a bunch of, you know, retro stuff. You know, there was, it was one of the first kind of, like, classic video game stores I remember seeing. In fact, I think it was the first retro game store I saw. And I remember seeing this game late in life. I was like, that's not even a, that's got to be like a Chinese bootleg. That's not even a real game. Uh, turns out it was a real game, and I should have bought it for 50 bucks back then. Uh, I ended up getting it later, but still, it doesn't have that same charm. It doesn't have that same classic something. I can't quite place my finger on what it is. Great game. It's a bubble bobble game. It's just more of the same bubble bobble. But interesting that later in this Nintendo stage, that you would have games that kind of have this kind of choppy feel like this game does. Certainly collectible if you find one cheap. Don't hesitate to grab it. But Bubble Bobble Part 2, it's real. They also made Tetris 2. Now, Tetris 2, I was thinking about that. It's like, well, how do you make a sequel to Tetris? Tetris, Tetrad, 4. You can't have more than those four pieces that they've already had. Well, they kind of broke that rule by uh, having four pieces, but still, they're maybe they're a little separated. And instead of just like clearing lines, this one's more about the uh, match three style. And you see those ones that have the dot in them. Um, you have to match the ones that are flashing. And then that eliminates those ones too. So different kind of gameplay style with Tetris 2. I actually enjoy this game quite a bit. And the fact that you can do two player as well, uh, that was great. Because the NES version, you'll remember, was an only a one player experience. This should have been a two player game. The Tengen version was two player, uh, but we had Tetris 2, two player, yeah, there you go. And you can also play versus the computer, which is always fun. If you can believe it, Miss Pac-Man came out on the NES in 1993. 1993. <laughs> we finally get Miss Pac-Man that came out in the arcades 13 years prior, which doesn't sound like that long of a time, but at the time it was, it seemed like an eternity. If that's even for the NES, I'm just like, trust me, I ain't getting Miss Pac-Man. There's Miss Pac-Man on everything else. And this may have been during a time where they're like, hey, you know what, we're gonna release Miss Pac-Man on the Super Nintendo, on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll put it on NES too. 
It was probably during around that time. Ren and Stimpy was such a great cartoon for the time. It was so off the wall, so insane, so wacky, so random. Uh, I mean, now everything tries to be random like this. Um, it just the writing was funny and the characters were funny and they made an NES game and they, you know, other games for other consoles too. The NES one, eh, I mean, uh, as you know, a lot of these licensed games aren't the most well games, <laughs> aren't the best games, but this was one I still had to at least rent. I remember renting this at least a couple of times and being like, yeah, you know, I knew what I was getting myself into. I get it. I get it, but it's, it's you know, it's Ren and Stimpy, so gotta show my support. Wayne's World, as well, uh, taken from a skit from Saturday Night Live for the time. Uh, they made uh, versions of other consoles. This one is its own one, and it is, um, well, how do I put it? Terrible, I guess is how I'll put it. It's one of those games, it should not go for the price it's going for, currently. <laughs> but, but, but fans of Wayne's World, yeah, they made a version on the NES. Why, why not? Why not? There you go. Got a new WWF game. This is King of the Ring now for the NES. Um, at this time, there was already, like, we had, you know, wrestling games on the Super Nintendo and on the Genesis, and now, hey, here's a wrestling game for the NES. Oh, I remember did I did purchase this game when it first came out, because I had to grab it. I was a huge wrestling fan, and not great, um, but, you know, just, it's just one of those, especially during this time, I mean, Whatever you think of like pro wrestlers and WWE and everything like that, you're just like, oh, you know, here's the wrestler and here's their character and here's their story and then here's their finisher. You know, because every wrestler has like their own signature move. Unfortunately, with these WWF wrestling games, uh, they don't have a signature move. There is like, they all, you know, there's no, anybody, like anybody can slam Yokozuna. Um, nobody has like, you know, their finishing move and stuff like that. But here we go. Curiously, we got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This is the second one. They already had an Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Taito. And now we have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from Ubisoft. And this one looks and feels like it could have been for like Game Boy Color, maybe Game Gear. I don't know. It's not great. Uh, the Taito one, I think, plays better. It's just so, it's interesting. I don't even know how they got away with it. It's interesting that for the NES, there are literally two Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade themed games. And they're both titled the same, and they even both have a very similar box art. However, uh, this this was the latter of the two. This is the one that's more collectible. But man, we got it in 1993. Make sure you're subscribed. I was talking about 1992 games earlier. I want to do that video coming up very, very soon. And if you missed 94, well, 94 was the swan song for the NES. The last officially licensed games for the NES were released the very next year in 1994. And I covered all of those games in this video right here. Make sure you click on that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're subscribed. And we'll see you super soon, I promise.